As much as I love studying the deep meat and doctrines of the Word of God, there is one thing that back in my Bible school that people favored the most, and that's actually commentary classes, verse by verse. The reason why is because you're actually reading the Word of God, and you're studying all the diversities from the verse. It can be devotional, doctrinal, deep doctrines, etc. Okay, so let's start with Galatians chapter 2. Where did we resume? Well, we finished off at verse 9, and then I explained to you what was going on over here. What was going on is that there's definitely a difference of ministries with Paul's ministry to the Gentiles and then the apostles' ministries to the Jews. So I explained to you the balance between hyper-dispensationalism and anti-dispensationalism there. Now let's resume verse 10 here, verse 10. Okay. Only they, so the apostles wanted... Paul and Barnabas, only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. So notice that verse 10, the apostles wanted Paul and Barnabas to remember the poor. And they also, uh, Paul also said, in this same thing, I was eager to do it. I was looking forward to do it. So Paul had every intention at verse 10 to minister to the poor people. So at verse 10, we're going to look at Acts chapter 11, please. Acts chapter 11. And then Romans chapter 15. Acts chapter 11 and Romans chapter 15. So as we start off at verse 10, we're going to see how they were able to minister to the poor and Paul did meet up that manner. If, in fact, if you read the book of Corinthians, Paul stressed so much about giving, giving, giving. Why? Uh, because it was helpful to other people who were suffering. So we're going to look at Acts chapter 11. Notice that Paul, he truly did minister to the poor. And that's what we ought to do too. You understand this, as a Bible-believing church, <clears throat> we got to have a heart that if there's someone struggling within the church, now it's important that you prioritize people in the church. Churches just go out of their way, meeting up random strangers, helping out uh, strange poor people, but those same poor people, they'll take the money that you sacrificed or the church sacrificed where they're going to please their flesh on drugs or something. So that's why it's important to set up priorities. Priorities is the brethren in your church first. If you take care of strangers outside more than your own people in church, then there's something wrong. So you have to set up priorities. So if when how we minister to the poor is that we just don't give them a handout like that, we have to realize that we got to set up priorities first who to take care of. And not only that, if you're going to minister to some poor person out there, you don't want to contribute to their drug addiction. So sometimes it will be best where if you're going to give money to them or help them out, that you find other means to do it where they don't use it for drugs. So that's how you can actually help the poor. So start doing that. So the ministry of Bible believers, it is to minister to poor people. That's what we do. So look at Acts chapter 11. Look at verse 27. In these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Okay, these people come from Jerusalem. They're speaking to the Gentiles in Antioch. Now, remember at Galatians chapter 2, the apostles who are in Jerusalem, they wanted Paul and Barnabas to remember the poor people in Jerusalem. Why? Because look at what's going on. By the Spirit that there should be great darth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send their relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So remember, Paul's old name was Saul. So notice right here that uh, Saul and Barnabas, or a.k.a. Paul, they did minister to poor people at Jerusalem. This was long before Galatians 2. So then, at Galatians 2, the apostles didn't want Paul and Barnabas to forget them. Because remember, Paul and Barnabas, they were so focused on the Gentiles... And we studied from our last Bible study, there was a controversy with the Jews in Jerusalem and Paul and Barnabas with the Gentiles. So because of that controversy, 
the apostles were hoping that Paul and Barnabas would not forget those Jews in Jerusalem where they're starving, where they need help. After all that ruckus that Paul and Barnabas went through. Let's look at Romans chapter 15 now. Romans chapter 15. <coughs> now let's look at Romans chapter 15. And notice that Paul, when he, after that Galatians 2 meeting, after that Galatians 2 meeting, Paul did not forget. And he actually, when he went, he returned to the brethren in Jerusalem. He had money for those poor people. Look at Romans chapter 15. And then let's see right here. Notice what Paul said that at verse 31, that I may be delivered from them that do not believe in Judea, and that my service which I have for Jerusalem may be accepted of the saints. So notice that Paul says he has a service that's ready for Jerusalem. So when he was writing to the Romans right here, he was going to make a trip to Jerusalem where he was going to have a service that can help out the needs of the poor people there. Uh, let's see right here. May be accepted of the saints. Verse 32, that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God and may with you be refreshed. Okay, so we see right here that at verses 30 through 32 or 30 through 31, Paul never forgot that promise and neither should we forget this promise we got to realize this is that uh, it's not about ourselves there's a brother and sister in Christ who's suffering next to you so it's important that you got to think about others so I hope that's what our church does our church has to prioritize other people other people's needs not our own not on our own otherwise we have no right to be called a Christian and those people will turn to the wrong churches who teach wrong doctrine to help them if Bible-believing churches don't help them. That's right. And that is a shameful testimony. Okay, so let's also return back to Galatians chapter 2 and verse 11. And when Peter was come to Antioch, so Peter, he actually visited Antioch to see where Paul is. But notice what Paul did to Peter. I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. So notice that Paul, he withstood him. He confronted him. To the face. It's like, to the face. So this is something serious going on right here. To the face, because he was to be blamed. Peter had a fault here. He had a blame. What you're going to find out as we go down to 12 and 13 and 14, what you're going to find out is that Peter, what happened was is that he caved into pressure from the Jews because Peter was fellowshipping with the Gentiles. Now remember, the, the whole previous commentaries I talked to you about, there is a argument debate going on with Jews and Gentiles. There's a hot debate, and Paul is angry at the Jews, trying to force down their own uh, practices and convictions onto the Gentiles. So what's going on right here is that Peter, he's caving into pressure from the Jews when he's fellowshipping with the Gentiles at Antioch. So Paul confronted him to the face and confronted him to the face because he was to be blamed. So let's look at Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. This is very interesting to note here that Peter, isn't he supposed to be the chief apostle? So the Roman Catholic Church, they all stress about Peter, 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 and Peter. But the problem is this, is that, okay, if your Peter is so special, imagine that you went to the Pope, withstood him to the face, and then rebuked him with scripture, and you were in the right for doing that. How would a Catholic feel? Oh, that is dishonorable. That is disgrace. How dare you do that to the Holy Father, blah, blah, blah. Who was Paul to point his finger at the first pope, Peter, if Peter is the first pope? Right. See, that was disgraceful. That is rude. Yeah. So you'll notice right here that Pete, one, Peter cannot be a pope, and two, Paul is more important than Peter then. Yeah. Wow, how about that? So there's a lot of people who hate the Apostle Paul because Christian doctrine is based on the writings of the Apostle Paul. So then they'll all get on the Apostle Paul. Even liberal schools get on the Apostle Paul. Muslims get on the Apostle Paul because they know Paul's writings is very, very different where it contradicts salvation by works. And they hate that period. So they all want to attack the Apostle Paul. But, 
And then they'll try to defend Peter. They'll try to defend the other apostles. And they'll say that Jesus taught differently from Paul. But here's something that you got to think about. Is that if Paul is not really that important, or he's actually a false prophet, how come in this passage right here that Paul was more in the right than Peter? And he actually uh, had more of the right where he corrected your holy father. So Peter must not be a really cool dude, I guess. Look at Matthew chapter 16. He's not Mr. Hotshot as the Pope. <clears throat> Look at verse 18, the famous Catholic passage that Peter must be the first Pope. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Oh, see, the church is built upon Peter. The church is built upon Peter. If the church is built upon Peter, Peter did a bad job. Because Paul had to correct him on how the church should be run. Not only that, you just look at several verses later, Peter was already possessed by Satan. <laughs> look at verse 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, who? Wow. Great way to have the foundation of your church built upon. Might as well be the devil, right? So if you want to insist Peter is what, whom the church is built upon, then what you can point out is according to verse 11 and Matthew chapter 16, that Peter would, that the church would be very flimsy, that the church will fall apart because you have an authority here that is shifting sand, that can be possessed by the devil. So you'll notice right here that Satan, he took chance of possessing Peter. And not only that, we got the Apostle Paul, who was better than Peter. This is not a good foundation for your church. <clears throat> Let's go back to Galatians, chapter 2 and verse 12. Verse 12. Now, the manuscripts, what you're going to notice right here, is that you'll notice that Galatians chapter 2, the Bible calls Peter, Peter, right? But it calls him one time Cephas at verse 9. <clears throat> so then the Alexandrian manuscripts, or the different manuscripts that try to correct your King James Bible, what they'll attempt to do is that they'll say that the proper reading should be, uh, I, that it should be Cephas. And I don't know all the details, but somehow that's supposed to connect where through Aramaic that, Peter can, that this Peter can then uh, hence be known as the rock which the church is built upon. But I'm not sure if that's true. But whatever the case may be, the point is, is that they think that it should be Cephas, not Peter. Because we see Cephas mentioned here at verse 9. No, the problem is this. The problem is that if you look at verse 9, well, if you look at the majority of verse chapter 2, the majority is Peter, right? So the majority of times it's Peter, not Cephas. Well, then why is verse 9, do we mention Cephas, not Peter? Very simple. The reason why is because it's his Jewish name here. It's his Jewish name. And notice the context is Jewish at verse 9. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen. And they, James, Cephas, John, unto the who? Circumcision, Jews. Remember, <clears throat> Peter, when uh, he met Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ uh, ga gave him Peter as the name. Uh, Simon Peter's older name, Cephas, is more of a Jewish. Because if Aramaic defends Cephas, that makes sense why Cephas is mentioned at verse 9. Because it's at an Aramaic Jewish context here. It's an Aramaic Jewish context. By the way, let's use our heads here. Do you think Paul was writing in Hebrew to the Galatians? No, it was Greek. So the Greek emphasis would be better here than Aramaic. And then the Greek emphasis would be better with Peter. But then Cephas, I like how it mentions Cephas at verse 9. Why? Because it's concentrating to an Aramaic Jewish context right there. <clears throat> 